Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Deb and this is Deb's Bean. Today I'm going to teach you how I lined a coat. So as you guys know, my uh, sister's friend is moving and keeps giving us stuff. So I got this lovely coat and this lovely blanket from her. Um, I really like the coat. It's blue, which is, you know, my color. And um, the blanket is also blue. And it just seemed like the perfect opportunity for me to make the coat a little bit warmer because it's more of a jacket, not really a coat. And I live in Alberta. It is currently winter. Um, the average temperature being about negative 30, which is really cold. So I probably won't be wearing this jacket for a while because even with the fleece lining, it is not warm enough for this <sighs> freezing cold temperature. Um, but it'll be really nice for spring and fall and summer. Yes, I will wear this coat in summer because I am cold all the time and I live in Alberta where it is also cold all the time, even in summer. Anyway, let's get right into this and so you can see how I lined my jacket. I hope that this is in shot because it's very hard to tell. Here is the coat I am going to line. It has a nice shape, but it is quite thin. I like the pockets and the drawstring at the waist. It has zippers in strange places, which I will remove. This is the warm fleece blanket I will be using to line the coat, which I also got from my sister's friend. After examining the blanket, I've decided I want the fuzzy side on the inside for added coziness. I laid out the blanket folded in half fuzzy side in. I loosened the drawstring of the coat, then laid the front panel on the fabric and pinned all around the seams of this panel. I used chalk to trace around the segment, adding a half inch of seam allowance as I went. I removed the pins. I removed the coat. And then I pinned the two layers of fabric together so they wouldn't shift, and I cut along the chalk lines. And here I have my front pieces. I followed the same process for the back, but this time I folded the back in half and placed the fold of the coat on the fold of the fabric. The elastic was tricky to work around, so I used the front panels as a size guide. Be sure to work carefully along the top as it is a bit tricky to lay it flat, but pins help. I laid out the rest of my fabric in four layers for the sleeves. I pulled the sleeve into the coat and laid the arm side at the top of the fabric and then traced the shape. Then I pulled out the sleeve and traced that shape as well. My fabric was too short for the whole sleeve so I folded the sleeve and marked where I folded it on the sleeve and on the fabric. I cut out the sleeve shape, also cutting up the fold so I had four pieces for the sleeves. Then I marked out the sleeve extensions with the sleeve allowance and cut that out as well. For the hood I laid out the rest of my fabric. I didn't have enough to cut the hood out in one or two pieces so I had to piece together what I had into big enough pieces to trace out my hood. I had just enough fabric left to make the hood which felt very serendipitous. I sewed around the curved edge of the hood, and that's my hood done! Next I sew down the long edges of the sleeves, being careful to have the fluffy side in. Once 
Once the sleeves were constructed, I went to add the extension and realized I had made the extension too small. So I had to make an extension for the extension, which I did by adding a rectangle of fabric to make it big enough. Then I finished sewing up my piece together sleeves. For the body, I laid my back piece fluffy side up and placed the front panel on top fluffy side down. I sewed up the side seam and repeated on the other side. And then the body was done. I turned the sleeves inside out and matched the bottom of the arm curve with the side seam of the body and pinned the sleeve in place, sewing it together. There are no shoulder seams in this coat. The sleeve is the shoulder as well. I think this is called a raglan sleeve. For the hood, I marked the center back of the neckline and matched this marking with the center of the hood. I pinned it into place working from the outside in, then stitched it into place. And my lining was done! To prep the coat, I removed the extra zippers. I have no clue what these zippers are for, but the side ones zip together and the bottom ones zip together, and I still have no clue what the purpose is. Removing the zippers took out part of the side seam and the main zip, so I re-sewed these seams up. I wanted to decorate the back, but didn't feel like embroidering. I also didn't have fab paints at the moment, so I sketched out a daisy with pencil, then drew it out in permanent marker. I will go over this in fabric paint when I acquire some. Now to marry the coat and the lining together in holy matrimony. Place the lining in the coat, fluffy side up, seams facing the coat. Pin the zip, pin up the zip and around the hood. I used a slip stitch to anchor it in place. Then I pinned along the bottom and whip stitched that into place. For the sleeves, I fold up the cuff, pinned the lining in place, then whipped the lining to the bottom of the elasticated cuff. From this project, I gained two zippers, and my waist was a small pile of fleece. And my coat is all warm now! So this is the jacket, and I love it. It's so warm. It'll be really nice for camping. The only part that kind of disappoints me about it is uh, the decoration on the back. It feels like it's not noticeable enough, and I put a lot of effort into that, you know? But, you know, Sharpies, they kind of fade and stuff. I'll just have to get some uh, fabric paint to make it pop. Anyway, that was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made sense. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, I'm sorry it's been so long since I posted. There's been a lot of stuff going on in my life. For example, I got my mole removed, and that's one of the reasons that I didn't want to post because it looked kind of horrifying because there was like stitches and it was bloody and gross, but no. You can see it's like not bloody or gross and I no longer have a mole there. But I think I will have a scar, but it's less noticeable than a mole. 
the reason I got my mole removed, which might be TMI, it's just like, you know, I was working in a daycare and like kids kept asking me what it was and I was tired of explaining it. That's the gist. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. I hope you have a fantabulous day. <laughs> Stay warm out there. Bye-bye.